Um, well, I don't know what time it is. Good evening, everybody. Uh, you know, it's, this reminds me a little bit of the uh, Grateful Dead song that said, what a long, strange trip this has been. Um, you know, uh, President Grimson and I met uh, about 11 years ago or so and uh, began this journey that uh, together, I, I could say together, but I think he kind of dragged me along um, with the Arctic Circle. And I, I was um, told last year about uh, Nordisland, uh, the Grimson Center here in, in Iceland and the commitment that the government was making in uh, the city of Reykjavik. And uh, the president uh, challenged me to come up with an idea uh, that could be um, uh, housed at the Grimson Center. And uh, after a lot of time, and I'll spare you the story, um, I came back to him uh, probably about nine months later and said, um, what do you think about a think tank and we'll call it the Minard Institution for Arctic Peace and Prosperity. And uh, when I shared my vision, uh, President Grimson was very enthusiastic. And as I've traveled around the world and spoken with people about this idea, uh, I, I had a lot of enthusiasm to the point that uh, uh, if I wanted to pull out at this point, it would be impossible. So um, anyway, I wanted to talk about my motivation, why, why peace and prosperity. And um, the, the motivation is driven by the fact that um, about you know, 11 or 12 years ago, uh, Alice Rogoff invited me to uh, Alaska where she wanted to take me on a tour of the North Slope and uh, the northern part of the state where it's largely indigenous communities and to uh, meet the people and to see the living conditions there. And um, when I met the, the people, I, I heard two things loud and clear. One is our way of life is being threatened by climate change. But the positive side is that this is opening up new opportunities for us. And um, when I, I saw the environment and realized that a lot of the development that is destined to occur in the Arctic as a result of the melting sea ice, that um, that it was necessary that, that the people of the Arctic needed to have the resources to build their own future, not to uh, be just uh, participants where investors and businesses from outside of the Arctic region would come in and uh, essentially uh, take advantage and gain wealth as a result of the changes that are happening. Uh, I also realized that, that the way of life of the Arctic um, belonged to the people of the Arctic and that, that the people from the rest of the world should not come in and superimpose their opinions and values uh, on the communities of the Arctic. And um, as the president mentioned, um, the Arctic Investment Protocol, which established six guiding principles for economic development in the Arctic, uh, which was introduced here um, and is now a formal part of policy at the Arctic Economic Council, um, you know, sits, sets down six standards, among which at least two of them uh, are concerned with inclusion and, and uh, respect for the Arctic peoples and Arctic cultures and their way of life. So when the president asked me about this idea and I thought of this think tank, 
that will be housed here at the Grimson Center, the global headquarters. Um, and I thought about what will it do? And, um, you know, I realized that the work I've done is largely in the area of economic development. And prosperity depends upon responsible economic development. But I also realized that it takes more than economic development to have prosperity. It takes peace. Because you cannot have true prosperity without security and peace. And so, you know, with the melting sea ice of the Arctic, the rapid changes in geopolitics today, uh, the Arctic Ocean will become a sea of blue water, which will be threatened by the interest of the great powers of the Earth. Because who will make sure that the policies that are established for the security of the Arctic are determined by the people of the Arctic? And so my vision is twofold. One is to help guide economic development in a responsible way based upon the will of the peoples of the Arctic and to help secure the peace of the Arctic, which is necessary to have true prosperity. So I wanted to, to work through these issues and we're beginning that trip now. Um, I have a, a Mike Schrager, who is the chairman of the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., um, has agreed to be my special advisor. And in a lot of ways, Mike can verbalize my vision better than I can. And he said to me when we had a meeting about this, he said, Scott, what you're talking about here is not a think tank. What you're talking about is a do tank. And think tanks write papers and books and give opinions and so on and so forth. The idea is the, the, the work that will be done at the Minard Institution uh, will be guided by the idea that it needs to be practical, implementable, and that it can also be used and adopted by players both in the public sector and the private sector. Now, I will tell you that people that hear this say, this is a big vision. But, you know, I got to tell you that when President Grimson approached me 10 years ago about the Arctic Circle, I sort of stared at him blankly. And I thought, this is a pretty big vision. And the truth of the matter is, is that it became apparent very quickly that the success of the Arctic Circle turned out to be much bigger than the vision that that President Grimson had. And it's unbelievable to stand here today from that first meeting 10 years ago when we sat in a hotel room and we discussed President Grimson's vision. So President v Grimson has an incredible vision for the Arctic, for Iceland. And so I felt that the vision for the modern institution had to be a big vision to fit the president's vision. The last thing I'll leave you with is, this is not an American institution. The choice of Reykjavik is a choice that this is a place where people can convene and talk away from the geopolitics of the world, that it's an open and democratic society, and the people who will ultimately run the Minard Institution will not be Americans but rather it will be the people of the Arctic and people who have vested interest here in the Arctic. So I, I thank you for the opportunity today to pr speak with you, and uh, I hope that you'll be as excited as I am about this and that uh, anybody who would like to be a part of it in any way, you know, I'd be more than happy to speak with, and I need help. 
So anyway, thank you all and God bless.